Good morning, my twinnies. It's your favorite twinful twin, Tasha. And it is an early morning here on Saturday because it's gonna be a hot one. And I wanted to be able to get some time in on the land before it was too hot to work. However, I want to say there was this massive outpouring from my live video this past week on Facebook. If you didn't see that, go to my Facebook page. You'll see the live. Bottom line is my ranch hand quit. <laughs> although that's the bad news. The good news is he isn't a twin, although he's well connected to twins. And I really want the ranch built by twins. It's, it's super important to me, whether they're living or they have a twin lost twin situation. Just the fact that it's twin energy that's being infused into this magical place is really what I want. And so long story short, a bunch of twins ended up reaching out. And literally that same day that I made the video, Kelly Christensen, so those of you who are in the twin loss community will know very well who she is because she spends a lot of time with Dawn in Texas. Anyways, Kelly Christensen booked a flight. She literally booked a flight and she's going to be here in two weeks. I can't believe it. Both Lisa and Carrie, which those of you who have known me for a long time, those are my project managers for the tie blanket project, even though that's on hold right now. Um, once we get that up and running, they are the gals that run all that. Love that. Anyways, they both reached out uh, for encouragement and then offering to help as well. And then I have a few other folks that have just, you know, that have just said, hey, I'm willing to help. Uh, let me know how I can help. So I am down here. Part of those questions uh, was about the equipment that I have. So I thought this week's video will be about all of my equipment because it's exciting and I don't know how to use it and I need help learning. Yes, I can watch YouTube videos. I will eventually figure it out, but it's so much more fun when you're together with twins. If there's somebody out there that knows how to do this and is willing to come help me, then that is freaking amazing. But again, you got to be a twin. So make sure you're a twin. If you're a twin and you want to help, please contact me. So now we're going to do a little tour of the equipment. So here are the two main pieces I believe that we are going to leverage the most for larger equipment. This skid steer is a T250 Bobcat. Isn't she a beaut? Um, and so we're looking at figuring out what other kind of attachments we need to get for her. Um, I have named her cat <laughs> short for Catherine because she's so bougie. Anyways, um, I do love her so much. Look, she's got her little claws. Um, that is what James was using to grab the manzanita and pull it, pull them out of the ground, which is like super fantastic. Um, so if there's any of you that know how to drive a bobcat and have any interest in teaching me, that would be amazing. So here is the cool thing about this. The gentleman who owned it before actually put in an air conditioning unit. So you put ice water in there in those and it's got a little pump on it fan and it will it will pump out cool air um so this is an old school one it's got the pedals i don't know if you can see the pedals can you see the pedals yeah there's pedals down there and then the two gear joists um well why don't we just get in it getting in getting in <laughs> Ta -da! So this is what it looks like inside and there's all these controls up here. She's got a cage so if you roll you're protected. Yeah so anyways she needs a little love um, but she is a skid steer after all. So there's are the controllers. I don't know if you can see there's not very good light but that's what the controllers look like. So anyways, um, yeah, that's cat. So this is our really super duper fancy. Well, I don't know. Um, I'm not an arborist, so I don't know if this is super duper fancy, but to me it is. Um, it's our big wood chipper. And so the problem we have right now is it's not running. Uh, we believe there's an electrical problem. 
Uh, so my husband's going to work on trying to get it running because he's kind of good with stuff like that. And so, um, but this gives you a good view of, of the unit. So it's a model 510 SD brush chipper. Um, I don't know what else to say about it, but we named it Red. Or, well, we're arguing whether it should be Clifford or Red, of course, but um, I really want to call it Red. So anyways, that's the wood chipper. Introducing Blackie. Yeah got a color theme going on here. Anyways, um, this is our splitter. So it's a Honda GC 190. She's a beaut. She works really, really well. And so this is the splitter for splitting all the logs for the trees that we've been processing. And this is baby blue. <laughs> this was our first chipper that we purchased actually from our neighbor. We've used it uh, several times and absolutely love it, but it can't fit anything bigger than a couple inches round or like, yeah, like maybe two inches round. Um, it's mobile, which is awesome, but it is really, really, really heavy. So uh, getting it up the hill uh, just by pushing it. Yeah, not going to work. Anyways, that's fascinating. For the chainsaws, we've got a Husqvarna 435, a 450, and then a steel MS391, and then a 461. Those are all of our gas-powered chainsaws. And then I also have an electric Ryobi. Uh, 40 volt for the smaller jobs. Uh, you've probably seen this in a couple of my videos already. So that is our chainsaw collection. I am learning how to service them. They all need new air filters uh, and I'm working on, I'm going to go ahead and purchase extra chains for all of them because I understand that you should have three chains. And then I do have a person in my life that said they'll help me learn how to sharpen the chains because I guess they get dull, <laughs> which totally makes sense. <laughs> so that's it for the equipment, but then we also have all of these hand tools. So we've got lots of shovels and rakes and pitchforks and more rakes and more pitchforks and trimming tools. So there's plenty of tools here to keep people busy. We have fuel tanks for the diesel um, for the skid steer, and then we have three tanks just like that for gas for all of the chainsaws. So I've had a few folks ask some questions about the bigger picture as far as the plan for the Butterfly Ranch and formalizing it as like a business. Uh, I, I don't, I want to assure you all, I, I don't see this as a business. I see this as um, a person who has a huge passion for, for twins and uh, I went 40 years after my twin died before I met another twin lost twin. 40 years was a very, very long time to walk the path um, and not fully understanding, one, what it meant to be a twin, nor having the courage to process my grief, um, let alone meet another twin lost twin. However, uh, once I finally did get the courage to meet another twin lost twin, my life completely changed. Uh, it was so transformational for me. Like, I can't even explain. I thought that my twin powers died with my twin, and the truth is it didn't. It didn't. It did not! <laughs> oh my god, it so did not. Um, Lisa Watson is is my twinny. Uh, the first one I met, I call her my number one, and... I realized that not only 
did my twin powers lay dormant until I met her. But once they were reignited, that I am so, so powerful and strong. And it provided a ton of purpose. This ranch provides purpose for this twin loss experience. That 40 years was a nightmare for me. And so, yeah, I, wa I want to pour into twins. That's my purpose. That's my purpose. And even if you never came to this ranch and all you did was watch my videos and you see the things that this group, this amazing group of twins is doing to bring healing to our community and just to bring knowledge and wisdom about how strong and powerful we truly are. That's awesome. That is, and that's fine. Like I, but for those who, who actually want to be a part of it and get their hands dirty and get in the land and experience the peace that I just showed you, you know, that it's open. I have, I have four bedrooms in my house. So I have three bedrooms that are basically vacant. Why not? Why not be the person on this planet that opens her heart and her home to souls that she knows so desperately needs it? Why not? Why not? So that is the purpose behind this is to just collectively bring a community together that so desperately needs each other. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. Twinless Twin Support Group International has done a fantastic job as a support group. They're fantastic. They do regional meetings. They do an annual conference. They, there's so much support in that area. And this is just my way of trying to contribute. So hopefully that answers that question for you. twins as you can see we're still working on cleaning up the debris from the skid steer work that is our giant pile I guess Molly gives a good representation of how big that pile is and so I'm trying to take the little piles that are just in this general vicinity and add them to the big pile just so that the part that is cleared already looks a little bit cleaner but as I go through this process, I'm finding these rocks, like decent sized rocks. And what's awesome about all the rocks that are on the land is that they can ultimately be used for the Hobbit house. Yeah, there's that. So, I'm collecting up all the rocks as I clear, not the tiny ones, of course, just the ones that are big enough to build walls with <laughs> or walkways. Oh, it's been hard work today, friends. It is super hot. I am drenched with sweat, <laughs> which is all good. That's part of the healing process. I've recently learned that, uh, this kind of labor and kind of sweating out your toxins really, really helps with kind of balancing your life energy. And if you're struggling with depression, or sadness, anger, whatever, doing a little bit of manual labor, getting your sweat on really helps your body. So I'm not afraid to work hard. I'm not afraid to sweat. Uh, I also get some really, really neat ideas while I'm out here and I honestly feel like a lot of your twins join me. <laughs> it does. It feels that way. It feels like I've got twins souls here kind of cheering me on and giving me ideas on things to do. Like, hey, you should collect the rocks for the Hobbit house. I don't know that I would have thought of that all by my little onesies. Pretty sure that was a little ping from heaven saying, hey, this would be a good idea. And they're right. They're always right. So anyways, um, I'm going to keep getting after it and keep cleaning up this mess.
think I would forget you, did you? <laughs> no, of course not. I'm not going to leave without my twins. I'm calling it a day on the hill. It's all sun, and uh, we're starting to get to midday. And once we do that, I think it's wise to either get in the shade or get in the pool. So, I know it's a shocker. I chose shade over the pool. Um, I have done several videos about the stairs down to the bridge that lead over to the Hobbit Hill. I have been wanting to work on these stairs since we got the property. And we haven't touched them. And I'm not quite ready to finish working today. Um, I've got a little bit more time. And I want to kind of prep this area for Kelly. I would love it if Kelly and I could finish this project while she's here. Um, I think it would be incredible. So there's some areas on the hill that have eroded. It doesn't have the wood anymore where the posts are. Um, so we're going to have to go buy some treated wood and all that. I'll save that part for when Kelly's here. But for today, I want to start cutting in uh, where those stairs are. So that's what we're going to do. My goodness my twins uh, look at them look at them look at them <laughs> yes i know there's still so much more to do um i need to cut deeper and room you know make room for the treated wood but it's just nice to know that it's safe to come up the top part of the hill now um as i've shown you in past videos there's sections of the stairs up the hill that are still there they're um you can see them with the wood, you know, it It just, it needs to be cleaned up. I, I want them a little bit deeper so that like they're not so shallow. I need to cut this in more. Um, but on some of them, I just unearthed the wood. Like it, you know, the, oh, well, hello, dragonfly. <laughs> Did you see that? That was a blue dragonfly. How cool is that? Um, so some of these still have the wood here. It was just the, the ground, you know, had, eroded down it and so I need to I need to keep keep digging in see how deep those actually go so we've got a good solid step but uh, uh I'm starting to lose steam I've put in several hours today and I'm getting tired and I have to save something for Miss Kelly and us to work on um so yeah I think I think this is where I'm gonna call it a day um so what is it about this I want to kind of touch base for just a minute about who is welcome at the ranch. Anybody's welcome at the ranch. Um, the goal is to cater to twins, but there's spouses of twins and parents of twins, siblings of twins, children of twins, uh, where their lives have been touched by a twin. And you might see this video and be like, I want to come to the ranch. I want to help. Well, of course, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome to come help. Um, but the point, you know, the goal is to really cater to those twins that have walked the path of twin loss. And I do realize that there are living sets of twins where they don't know which one of them is going to go first, but the likelihood that one of them will go before the other one is probably pretty high. And I've had living sets of twins express an interest in coming to help. And it just comforts them knowing that whichever one ends up having to face this path, that they contributed to a sanctuary that they can ultimately come to. So yeah, I mean, anybody can come, but ideally it would be folks that are impacted by twins in, in a mighty way, and um, especially the twin loss community. Um, that's, that's what the purpose of all of this is. I hope that makes sense to you. So what is it that I'm asking for? I'm asking for two hours of labor for every night that you stay. So it's not going to cost you any money to come here. And I mean, sure, if you want play money, spending money, Jackson's a super cute little town. If you want to go down and, and do that, of course, you can do that. But 
if you want to come and just experience the mountain house, I just ask for two hours of labor per day. So if you stay, or I should say for night, that you spend the night. So if you stay for three nights, then like say you fly in on a Friday and you leave on a, on a, or you fly in on a Thursday and you leave on Sunday, then yeah, I think six hours of labor sometime in that time frame that you're here is a fair trade for an opportunity to experience this magical place. So that's all I ask. If you decide to put in more time, that's completely up to you. But all I ask is for two hours per night that you stay. So again, people that aren't twins are welcome to come. Friends and family are welcome to come. It's just with the purpose of getting all of this built out. And now, I believe the mosquitoes have found me. So I'm going to run up to the pool and relax for the rest of the day. Thank you so much for joining me today on this adventure. I can't wait. I can't wait to host you. It's pool time, my twins. This twin's been making nibbly bit trays long before charcuterie boards were popular. Oh yes, this is what you get to look forward to. Yay! Dear twins, please come play with me. I know you won't regret it. And we will get to live twinfully together.